Today, I'm going to introduce sustainable and renewable deep eutectic solvent for biomass utilization. So before I introduce the research, I will briefly introduce the why we select the lignocellulosic biomass and what are the potential and challenging of this biomass utilization. Renewable energy has been studied uh, last few decades because of many reasons. First of all, like the environmental concern. Last week, there was a unusual uh, climate change in Texas, and then we had a hard time to get the power back and the internet and so on. And we can easily see the wildfire in California and tornado in other places in these days due to the climate change. And this climate change is reported as uh, one of the phenomena caused by the greenhouse gas emission. Therefore, it is necessary to uh, address this environmental concern by alternative energy more green and eco-friendly. Also, energy security and independency are critical issue in these days because resources are consuming, but we couldn't find a good uh, replacement of current petroleum chemical by now. Interestingly, 2019, according to EIA report, US uh, energy independence is achieved somehow by increased uh, export of petroleum extremely increased. However, it does not mean we are secured. The energy security always correlated with energy consumption and we know that technology uh, improvement also required more energy sometimes by the more user. And similar to the energy security, sustainable, sustainability of energy resources is also critical. So we need to think about where is the energy or material from, and we need to find more sustainable resources for our future uh, life. So this is one of the table reported by EIA 2019. Though we have developed many different alternative energy sources, still renewable energy is only 11% of total US energy consumption. Still, we are heavily rely on petroleum-based, uh, fossil fuel-based uh, product and energy. So 80% of energy are from the petroleum, natural gas, and coal. When we look at the renewable energy, so among the renewable energy consumptions, biomass takes about 43%. It's surprisingly high because I thought solar energy or wind energy take more than uh, bioenergy. But when you look at the biomass utilization for energy consumption carefully, actually 4% is biomass waste. Here, the biomass waste indicate the municipal solid waste. So once we get the municipal solid waste, either at the landfill side, we convert them to biogas, like the biomethane, or just uh, dis dis uh, discard those waste in the, on, under the ground. So this energy biomass waste is from the biogas. And biofuel 20% actually is from the bioethanol. So first and second generation biofuel and biodiesel and some other partially commercialized biofuels are 20% of this biofuel. And another 20% of wood bioenergy is actually just simple direct combustion of pellet to generate the energy for cooking, heating or others. So still there are lots of room to improve to increase the use of renewable energy in our uh, society. So why we select the bioenergy? What is the benefit of bioenergy? We already see many places use the solar panel, wind power, hydropower, and so on. However, the renewable energy only cover 11% of total energy consumption in the United States. So further investigation is necessary and Bioenergy, it has a wide range and sustainable feedstock. So it is not just tree and then uh, grasses harvesting. 
we can get the bioenergy from the agricultural residue. So after harvesting the grain, we can utilize them. Also, we can use some forest residue or other uh, trimming the wood and so on from the society. So it is not just cutting the wood. We can use many waste for the energy resources. And also the carbon uh, neutrality is a well-known factor that bioenergy can produce the bio, uh, carbon dioxide, but also these are consuming by the tree and then grasses. So we can reach the net zero carbon footprint with uh, bioenergy utilization. And as I mentioned earlier, we can utilize a waste. So not, it is not necessary to harvesting the uh, biomass always from the field, we can utilize a waste material for the bioenergy production. And bioenergy, like the biofuel, we can see the bioethanol easily from the gas station and they blend it with the fossil fuel like the gas. So th the advantage is we can still use lots of current infrastructure from the fossil fuel. So it is easier to adopt the bioenergy compared to other energies. And yeah, available versatile product, it is not just one form. We can make different form of bioenergy from the biomass feedstock. Then what is the biomass? What I, the biomass, what I'm talking in this presentation is lignocellulogic biomass. So from the grass or tree, we can easily find this plant cell. And this is the major component in the lignocellulogic biomass, which are the cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Cellulose is a polymer of glucose has been used for the key material in paper and other material application, but it is also available for the biofuel production through biological or thermochemical process. Hemicellulose is heterogeneous polysaccharide composed of xylose, mannose, galactose, arabinose, and other sugar acid. So all the traditional uh, biofuel more focusing on the cellulose, but we already expand the application with engineered uh, microorganism and other method. So we utilize both cellulose and hemicellulose for the biofuel and bioproduct uh, formation. Lastly, there are about 15 to 30% lignin exists in the plant cell wall, which are not the carbohydrate. So this is the largest non-carbohydrate component in the biomass. And this is an aromatic compound polymer, uh, aromatic polymer in the nature. So it is, it has a different function compared to the carbohydrate in the plant. So traditionally, this lignin is a major recalcitrant factor for the conversion. It provides a physical barrier or non-productive binding with micro uh, enzymes. Therefore, people try to remove this lignin before you, they use the biomass. However, in these days, people also notice that it is a great potential, it has a great potential as a feedstock because of its aromatic nature. So the region, lignocellulogic biomass is a great resource is because it is abundance. And also we can avoid the ethical issue from alleged from the first generation biofuel. So like first generation biofuel produced from the grains and then people has uh, raised up the issue because utilization of, of food from, for the fuel purpose can be some ethical problem because some other part of the countries may starving due to the insufficient food. So second generation or most of the lignocellulogic biomass are not food material. So we can avoid the issue about this uh, argument. And of course, this biomass is green material. So it, it has a better uh, it, it is more like eco-friendly material and it can generate more cash cow to the rural area because previously biomass, especially agricultural residue, after we harvesting the grain, the leftover, we just cut and then combust it and then just discard it. 
However, now we can use it as a new cash cow in the rural area, so farmer can get more profit and also create more jobs in the, in the nation. Old traditional biomass utilization is more like the paper and pulping process. So we can make the paper from the biomass, especially purify the cellulose and make it as a material. However, we can expand this application to different fuels. Already I mentioned the first and second uh, generation biofuel, like the ethanol diesel, but also we can thermochemically decompose and make it hydrocarbon. Of course, we can decompose and then transform some of the compound to furan-based chemical or BTX from the biomass component. And by the uh, polymerization through the microorganism or chemical method, we can make the materials. Or if biomass as it is, we can just transform the structure or uh, separate some compound and we can make the hydrogel or aerogel and other components are available. And of course, the intermediate of this transformation is carbohydrate. So you can make the sugar, which can be used as a food. So biomass has that much advantage, then why we cannot utilize well so by now? One of the reason is natural barriers. So the biomass has a variety. So depending on the species, but also even you use the same material, Depending on the environment, the biomass characterization, mainly chemical compositions are different. Therefore, it is not easy to optimize the process for different biomass resources. Also, biomass itself has very rigid structural barriers, and then they have very complicated chemical structure. Therefore, it is necessary to overcome this biomass recalcitrance before the effective utilization. So these natural barriers cause the technical barrier. So we need to use very uh, effective and efficient catalyst and solvent to utilize them and probably utilize the one component or two component may not enough to commercialize it. So it is necessary to think about how much we can utilize in the biomass component in Ideally, entire biomass utilization is most ideal. Also, we need to think about the cost barrier. During the transformation or production of, of biofuel and other component, probably they produce some waste and unwanted product, side product. And we need to think about how can we treat it. And also solvent and catalyst uh, use are critical cost so we need to make entire process from the upstream to downstream cost effectively. So our group's research goal is our final destination. Our goal is develop efficient and green utilization stra uh, strategy for biomass. So we want to uh, make the biomass for any valuable product. It doesn't need to be fuel, but we can also make it chemical or material. So we want to maximize the utilization of biomass. For to achieve this goal, we have a three main strategies. The first one is we try to elucidate the physical and chemical properties of biomass and its product. Because this fundamental understanding provide us how the biomass interact with the different catalysts and solvent. And this information give us more comprehensive understanding of biomass utilization. Second is based on this understanding, we want to improve the biomass conversion efficiency. So we want to find effective, but also eco-friendly solvent or catalyst for the utilization. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, probably one or two component utilizations may not enough to barrelize uh, biomass, especially if you want to commercialize the biomass, we, you need to maximize the utilization of biomass. Therefore, we try to make the high value product, especially high value added co-product is essential to commercialize the biomass uh, process. So these three uh, supporting objectives are our main approach for our research group. So today, what I'm going to introduce is deep eutectic solvent. So deep eutectic solvent 
will be used for the biomass pre-processing. So why we need the biomass pre-processing or pre-treatment? As I mentioned earlier, biomass is complicate and then heterogeneous material. So it is necessary to remove or reduce some of the recalcitrant factor and then make the substrate more uniform and uh, predictable. So we want to uh, reduce this kind of uh, variation by the pre-treatment and pre-processing. So pre-treatment and pre-processing are used for reducing the recalcitrant factor, including the physical barrier in the plant cell wall, but also chemical structure barrier and uh, unwanted uh, inhibitor factors. Traditional biomass utilization, this is the uh, process flow from the biomass to secondary, uh, second generation biofuel like the bioethanol. Generally, we introduced pretreatment at the first stage. So what happened is this one decomposed the biomass structure and reduced some of the recalcitrant factor, especially lignin in the traditional method. So we can either move, remove the lignin or other component before we introduce the enzyme and the microorganism. So maximize the conversion of cellulose or other, other carbohydrate in the biomass. And this lignin was not well utilized at the, uh, in the traditional process. So we can just recover. And some of them, very small quantity of lignin was utilized and the rest of them just used as a combustion energy source. So the solvent is very critical for biomass conversion. Traditional solvent system for biomass conversion was either hydrothermal method, just to introduce the water and then increase the temperature. This water cooking or hydrothermal liquefaction remove some easy amorphous structure like the hemicellulose and then increase the enzyme accessibility to target carbohydrate, which is cellulose. So that was one way. And more effective way is introduce either dilute acid, low concentration of acid or alkaline solvent to remove either hemicellulose or lignin from the biomass prior to the biological conversion. Also, uh, or organic solvent to was used with acid or base catalyst because organic solvent has a high solubility with lignin so they can perform high delignification from the biomass and that was originally from the paper and pulping process because pulping process want to remove the lignin as much as they can but also keep the original structure of cellulose so make enough strength of paper in the cellulose. So this method works well with only one component, like especially for the biofuel production, if you are aiming just a cellulose conversion, this traditional solvent system is enough to get the high yield. However, it needs harsh conditions, so high temperature and or pressures are necessary. And because of the harsh condition, unwa unwanted side reaction happen, mostly carbohydrate dehydrate to furan, which is good product if you want to convert biomass to furan-based chemical. But this furan-based chemical easily condense to each other and make pseudolignin or humin, which are not soluble in the solvent anymore. And we lose this carbohydrate source for any application. We cannot utilize it anymore. So recent couple of decades, uh, recent few years, people tried to introduce new solvent system for biomass conversion. So the one category is biomass drive solvent because they want to make the system more sustainable. Silane, THF, or gamma verulaftan, they can be used with a small quantity of acid for effective biomass conversion. And according to their report, they can produce this solvent from the biomass component. And this solvent has a high swelling effect and the solubility with biomass component. So not necessary to that high temperature compared to the traditional method. Ionic liquid is another well-known solvent because of low boiling point, high ion conductivity and thermal capacity. 
So we can convert biomass, I mean, pretreat the biomass under moderate temperature with ioning liquid. Similarly, molten salt hydrate with a high concentration of salt with lithium bromide or zinc chloride, they can uh, produce a uh, furan based chemical or just do the pretreatment for effective conversion easily because the function of the molten salt hydrate are quite similar to ioning liquid. And recently, people are more interested in the debutectic solvent development because this debutectic solvent was introduced as an alternative of ioning liquid. So it is inexpensive compared to ioning liquid, but it has almost all the ioning liquid advantages. So it is a good uh, alternative solvent to replace the expensive ioning liquid for the biomass conversion. So th those new solvents mostly conduct the conversion of biomass under moderate temperature compared to the traditional method. And then conversion efficiency was significantly improved and at least comparable with traditional method. And another thing is these solvents are non-required high temperature and that one pro, uh, prevent or at least reduce the unwanted condensation or side reaction because harsh condition always uh, cause more transformation of biomass component. Therefore, these advantages are highlighted as a profit of new solvent. So today, what I'm going to introduce is debutectic solvent. So debutectic solvent is a mixture of two or more different components, which are hydrogen bonding donors or acceptors. And then those mixture, once they reach the eutectic point, even though each of their melting point is much higher, once they have some, uh, once they get the eutectic point with a certain ratio, the melting uh, point of this mix mixture significantly reduce and then the melting point of this solvent become below 70 or 80 degrees or even lower, almost room temperature. So this one has great thermal stability with low volatility. And then also because of the high energy capacity, the vapor pressure is low. Also, we can make lots of combination with for this eutectic solvent. So it is easy to tune the function and then structure based on the requirement. So that's why we highlight this debutectic solvent as a promising candidate for the for replacing the current volatile organ organic solvent. This uh, slide just presents the example of debutectic solvent compound. I'm not going to talk about in detail, but you can easily see many compounds are available from the nature. So by uh, debutectic solvent apply in many area, including the metal ex extraction, uh, gas capture like the carbon dioxide capturing, electrolyte application, biocatalysis, pharmaceutical, and others. But here today, I'm going to focusing on the bio process, a uh, biomass conversion process. Our group did some survey. So from 2008, 18 to 2020, we tried to see how many uh, articles published with the two keywords. One is biomass and another one is debutectic solvent. And you can see that once we try to see the keywords from these two main keywords, we can see the major keyword from the biomass and debutectic solvent is pretreatment, fractionation, extraction, and enzymatic hydrolysis. So it indicates that many studies are actively occurred with debutectic solvent, but we want to use more than that. So our group tried to make the debutectic solvent from the biomass. So we call them as a renewable debutectic solvent, which are available from the renewable resources. And we also want to make the process in a closed loop since we can make the eutectic solvent uh, component from the biomass it means once we fractionate and then before we uh, 
convert everything, we can extract some component from the biomass component and then make the entire process more sustainable. So this re renewable debutectic solvent, uh, once we searching the previous studies, mainly studied with choline chloride or betaines with several carboxylic or dicarboxylic acid. And aromatic compound was started to introduce from 2018 with lignin-based one. So I'm going to introduce our debutectic solvent, which is lignin-based debutectic solvent. So lignin is recalcitrant factor, as I mentioned, and then the structure is more like the aromatic polymer composed of three major aromatic compounds, silingyl and then guaisyl and then hydroxybenzyl alcohol. And then they are connected through the carbon-carbon and carbon-oxygen linkages. So this lignin mostly used, uh, considered as a waste by now, only 2% lignin from the refinery process utilized and rest of them just used as a direct combustion because of its high energy content. However, actually the generated lignin from the real industry contains some other component and not easy to utilize. That, that's why they just simply combusted as an energy source. But we cannot give up the aromatic structure, which is a nice uh, promising feeder of this lignin as a feedstock. And also this is really sustainable. All the biomass processing generate the lignin as a waste. So if we can utilize this, maybe we can improve the total utilization of biomass. So there are many different lignin utilization, but in this study, instead of we create a new product, what we want to do is make the biomass processing solvent from the lignin. So make the process uh, in a closed loop concept. 2018, there was a first paper about the lignin-based debutectic solvent, and they tested it with a few aromatic compounds potentially generated by hydrogenation or oxidation of lignin. And this one shows great potential as a uh, lignin-based solvent uh, as a biomass processing solvent. However, only few compounds were tested and then the feedstock they tested is switchgrass. So it is not easy to say that this is effective for all the biomass and also the feasibility. To complete the closed loop process, it is necessary to make the DES compound from the real lignin. So that is missing part to support the concept. So I'm going to introduce two different study from now. The first one is integration of renewable debutectic solvent with engineered biomass. So instead of using the low biomass, we intentionally adopt some engineering biomass to see up to prove our hypothesis. So here, one of our collaborators generate nice mutant, which is Cinnamyl alcohol dehydrogenase uh, double mutant. So when you see the slide on the left side, this is the lignin biosynthesis pathway from the phenylalanine in the nature. This phenylalanine is converted to three major aromatic compounds in the lignin by several different genes with enzymes. And if we deactivate or uh, downregulate some of the gene with a certain pathway, we can modify the lignin structure in the plant. So we try to compare this engineered biomass with regular wild type biomass. So what the collaborator did was uh, downregulate the CAD gene here. So instead of all the uh, phenylalanine go to the aromatic alcohol, their biosynthesis stop at the stage of aldehyde. So the wild type, according to the HSQC NMR result, has the traditional, I mean, typical aromatic compound uh, is exist in the wild type. So cylindrical alcohol or the glycols are exist in the wild type. But after mutation, this engineered uh, biomass does not have a typical bi uh, compound much 
but they have more aldehyde compound in the bio uh, in the lignin. And we want to apply the eutectic solvent with aromatic aldehyde. So biomass lignin now is matched with the pretreatment solvent component, which is aldehyde, aromatic aldehyde. So, so we select two aldehyde for the pretreatment. One is vanillin and another one is hydroxybenzoic aldehyde. And then we try with different uh, molar ratio to make the eutectic solvent. According to our test, one to two ratio was uh, eutectic point for both the solvents. So we use this uh, eutectic solvent for the biomass conversion. So after pretreatment, we just took the biomass under mild condition, just put the biomass in the eutectic solvent at 80 degrees C. And then after the pretreatment, we recover the residual solid and do the enzymatic hydrolysis. Both pretreatment method in wild type and the mutant increased. However, the enhancement with the mutant is almost double of the wild type, especially once we convert in the convergent yield based on the theoretical glucose in the pretreated uh, solid. About 40% of glucose produced after the pretreatment with wild type, but once we use the engineered biomass, the pretreatment effect was increased to up to 70%. So this result indicate us that probably the lignin structure and the similarity, chemical similarity with solvent may a factor for the biomass conversion. We try to understand further with more linkage information. So the wild type has just typical linkage like the beta for linkage carbon oxygen bond. This is most abundant in the wild type plant. And then there are some small carbon carbon linkage according to the NMR result. But once we see the mutant, this is even before the pretreatment, we cannot see those traditional linkages anymore. However, we know that this lignin is still polymer. So how can we explain it? We try to see the in, uh, linkage information from other sites, and then we can see the aroma, uh, aldehyde signal from the NMR result, which will not exist in the wild type. And then the, we found that this signal is from the 804 linkage instead of beta 04 linkage. Even that this is still carbon oxygen bond but the structural formations are different because of the aldehyde. And according to DFT calculation, we found that the 804 dimer has higher electrophilicity index. It means it is chemically more reactive than the beta for linkage. That is, so this could be the reason why wild type has higher conversion. I, I also mentioned that the uh, the closed loop refinery process. So to accomplish this, we need to produce the dibutectic solvent compound like the vanillin or hydroxybenzoic aldehyde from the lignin. So we tested with the hydrothermal depolymerization method and then see what kind of aromatic compound we can get from the wild type and then cad mutant. Since Wild type biomass does not have that much aldehyde compound be, be, because it didn't modify it. So we still can get some aldehyde compound, but there are not much. But if you see the CAD mutant by the hydrothermal depolymerization, we can obtain lots of uh, vanillin or silinge aldehyde or coniferi aldehyde from there. So it indicates that there is a great potential to recover the lignin from this processing. We can use it as a substrate for the production of deep eutectic solvent compound, especially hydrogen bonding donor. So in summary, this project, we try to see the benefit of engineered mutant, but this is not just simply see the effect of a mutant plant. We want to know that our hypothesis, which the similarity of the solvent and the target component is matter or not for the biomass pretreatment. So 
This one can support I, our hypothesis about the solvent and the lignin similarity. And also we can show the, some potential for the closed loop system. Second project is more comprehensive study. So after we got this uh, result, we want to study further, especially about the region to explain the improvement of biomass conversion. So in this study, instead of grass or other uh, testing biomass like the Arabidopsis, we try to use the real wood for the conversion. So lignin-based debutectic solvent, again, we adopt three by, uh, hydrogen bonding donor for the synthesis of debutectic solvent. Actually, the PHA, uh, hydroxybenzoic aldehyde, is from that previous study. And p comaric acid is from the first lignin-based debutectic solvent study. So we just select the two best uh, hydrogen bonding donor from previous study, and we select another hydroxybenzoic acid as a third component. The reason we select this hydroxybenzoic acid as a debutectic solvent component is because in the woody material, this p-hydroxybenzoic acid is one of the major aromatic component in the lignin. So we want to know that is our hypothesis in the previous study is right or not with this new aromatic compound. So we tested the eutectic point. This one is different from the previous two eutectic points. So three to two molar ratio, choline chloride and the p-hydroxybenzoic acid provide us a eutectic solvent. So according to DSC analysis, each of the p-hydroxybenzoic acid and choline chloride, they are melting point over 200 or 300 degrees C. But after the uh, the, after they form the eutectic solvent, the melting point reduced to the, around the 60 degrees C. And we also try to understand the chemical uh, structure formation when they form the debutectic solvent with the TFT study. So surprisingly, once we apply these three eutectic solvent, the new Debutectic solvent with choline chloride p-hydroxybenzoic acid shows much higher sugar, uh, sugar conversion than the other two. One of the reasons we can found is this new debutectic solvent remove much more lignin and then xylose from the biomass compared to the previous debutectic solvent. But that is just a chemical composition changing. So we want to understand it further through the other property analysis. So the first test we did was crystallinity. As you know, the cellulose composed of aromatic region and then crystalline region together. And crystalline region has more higher rigidity from the acid or enzyme attack. So if we, our crystallinity significantly change it, then probably that is the region. However, we cannot see significant changing from the crystallinity. Instead, we can found that degree of polymerization, the chain length of cellulose significantly reduced by choline chloride p-hydroxybenzoic acid debutectic solvent. That means this debutectic solvent provide more reducing end and those reducing end can be easily approached by the enzyme. So that's why we can have higher glucose conversion. Another factor we observe is enzyme accessibility. So using the orange dye, we try to see the surface area which enzyme can approach to the cellulose. And again, choline chloride p-hydroxybenzoic acid DES shows the highest. Because in the previous table, I showed that the cellulose, uh, hemicellulose and lignin was significantly removed. So it provide more pore and then surface area than compared to other pretreated or untreated biomass. So we tried different reaction condition to see which condition is the best. As temperature increase or time increase mostly remove more lignin, but suddenly at the nine hour, we can see significantly reduce the delignification effect. And we can see the similar results from the solid recovery. 
So it should be lower according to the regular trend, but suddenly the mass increase. We try to understand the region and then according to the literature, some literature said uh, pseudolignin, which is formed from the condensed aromatic uh, compound or furans from the carbohydrate condensation makes some special insoluble lignin, uh, soluble compound. And that could be the reason. So we tried with pure xylan for the reaction and we observed this pseudolignin formation from their testing. NMR result shows we still can keep the p-hydroxybenzoic acid indicate we can make the in a closed loop process from this recovered lignin. And also we can, unfortunately we can see some contain contamination with dibutectic solvent. Therefore we need to, uh, one of our future studies, we want to purify the lignin further with improved downstream process. And hydroxyl group is important because we want to valorize this lignin. So we try to understand the hydroxyl group content in the lignin by phosphorus NMR. And by the pretreatment, aliphatic OH decreases because cleavage happen. While more cleavage happen means it generates more aromatic OH in the structure. So we can see the consistent result from the P31 NMR analysis. Since cleavage happen a lot according to the NMR result, we can see that the molecular weight of lignin significantly reduced from the 16,000 to 1,400. So lignin already decomposed significantly and then make very small uh, powder. The recyclability is still important. We don't want to uh, discard this dibutectic solvent after one time use, but Recyclability tests indicate the performance after first run, second and third recycling reduce the efficiency of delignification about 70% or a little lower. And we tried to see the region and one of the region is because of the con unwanted condensation. So this is the process uh, we, this is a summary of our second project. Uh, so we try to understand comprehensively how the biomass, especially woody biomass, react with lignin-based dibutectic solvent. Similar to the previous study, the solvent, especially aromatic compound uh, structure, the similarity with the target lignin matter for the conversion or extraction of lignin in our study. So we will do some further study for the optimization or recycling or the recovery of DES. And also we are thinking to do the testing and optimization for the conversion of lignin to dibutectic solvent compound. So I'd like to thanks to our group member because I'm just third year junior faculty. It is not accomplished this much result without my student support. So I really appreciate my student support and hard work. And I also thanks to many of my collaborators because limited resources with starting the junior faculty, I got lots of help from many other uh, collaborators. So I would like to thanks to everyone attending my presentation and feel free to ask any question. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Yun. If anybody has questions, you can enter into the box, the chat box, or you can unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, hello, all. I could ask a question to get started. Um, it's Alan Chafee here. Um, I wondered if you could talk, Chang, about uh, the, how you do, how you can recycle or recover the uh, uh, the the liquid, the um, deep eutectic solvent. Um, oh, and I, I, as, yeah, just yeah. Uh, if you could talk about that. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for the asking. And then, yeah, that is one of the big tasks once we recover the lignin and the dibutectic solvent because 
this dibutectic solvent solubilize lignin, but also carbohydrate. So we need to think about how to recover it. So the way we did in the lab scale at the beginning was we know that once we acidify the solvent, so after the pretreatment, we washing with water, but also introduce some ethanol. One of the reason is aromatic compound is not easy to wash it with water only. So we use one-to-one -one ratio ethanol water to washing it out. And once it is solubilized in ethanol and water, now it is not dibutectic solvent anymore. So introduce the, uh, we just filtered it with membrane and then try to recover the lignin because the lignin still the molecular weight is over a thousand. So we can filter it with membrane separation. After that, the remaining solution, we, we just dry them and then recycle it. So still has many impurity or other component exists in the dibutectic solvent. That's why our future study is how to separate further and then make the efficiency of recyclability to accomplish the economically feasible process. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Dr. Chang Jun, you have questions in the chat box. Oh, let me see. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So the question is, what is the maximum weight percent lignin solubilization? Okay, so the lignin solubilization in dibutectic solvent also matter depending on what dibutectic solvent you are using. So actually, this is a very good question because last week my students starting to testing for further investigation. So I don't have a clear answer for the maximum percentage now because we are just testing from the last week. But I on Based on my understanding, this uh, dibutectic solvent uh, lignin solubility is still comparable with some of the organic solvent. So that is one of the advantages, high solubility, but extract the lignin under milder condition compared to some of the organic solvent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Any other questions from our audiences? May, may I ask you, Dr. Yong, to go to your mutant and the wild type, one of the slides? Yeah, okay. Because I didn't really uh, follow you properly. Can you clarify a little more? Okay. Yes, this, yeah. So generally, if we do not do any mutation, Lignin uh -huh. synthesis properly go until the last destination, and then they make the p hydro uh, p comari alcohol, coniferyl alcohol, snapyl alcohol as mm -hmm. a aromatic component in the wild type. I mean, what is that? The regular biomass. But mm -hmm. what we did was we did gene modification with this CAD gene. So mm -hmm. what happened is we deactivate or reduce the activity of this CAD gene. Then they mm -hmm. do not release the enzyme to converting from the RDI to the alcohol. Mm -hmm. By then mutant, that plant still has a lignin, but the aromatic compounds are mostly with aldehyde instead of alcohol. Mm -hmm. There's another question for you. Yeah. Comparing your ED, ED, the DES with your lignin. I'm not sure what is reliance. You mean the multiple lines or? Uh, Dr. Sajid Bashar, can you unmute? Oh. Two to one ratio, choline chloride and then urea. Okay. Okay, so no, we did not do the direct comparison with choline chloride urea because we, our, strategy was try to make the uh, eutectic, I mean, the hydrogen bonding donor from the lignin. But yeah, I can see that many people use either choline chloride urea or choline chloride lactic acid for the conversion. 
one thing I know is I tested with choline chloride urea for the second project for the woody biomass conversion, but the conversion, especially delignification, was not great. So that's why we didn't test with choline chloride with urea for the woody com compound conversion. There is one more question about the, I think, uh, if extraction, extraction efficiency. So extraction efficiency is higher at lower temperature. Did, did you extract as low like the 120 degrees C? So let me go to the slide for, I believe this is about the second project. Oh, let me see. Sarge, do you refer to 12 Celsius or 100 Celsius, 120 Celsius? I assume that this is the 120 degrees, I guess. Oh, okay. or, okay. Yeah. So the extraction efficiency 120 is higher. I'm not sure. So here the solid recovery, I want to clarify it. So once we did the pretreatment, we remove some of the component. Here, the delignification is the yield of removal of the lignin. And then solid recovery is after the pretreatment, the remaining solid amount. So if this number is higher, means the extraction didn't work well. While if the number is low, we don't know which component it is, but it remove more component from the biomass. So I'm not sure, but According to our testing, 160, either three hour or six hour is the best condition for the delignification. And then it's consistent with our solid recovery calculation. Any other questions from our audiences? May, may I have a non-technical question for you? Sure. <laughs> Because your, your very last slide, how, how did you prepare those beautiful 3D pictures? The, so the very last one, the, the, the uh, acknowledgement, uh, the, 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 the very, yeah, those beautiful graphs. How, how did you prepare them? Oh, no, actually, this is, I, I just purchased the slide template. I, oh. I had a... I spent a long time to get the right image, especially bioenergy is not that common template. So oh, once okay. I get it, yeah, I just purchase it. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I assume the silence menu no more questions. If that's the case, let's give our speaker a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending and feel free to email me if you have a further question so I can answer you by email. Yes, yes. thank you all for attending. Uh, the Friday on March 26th, we have another, another presentation. So the same time, the same Zoom account. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Yun, for your beautiful talk. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs>